Hi, I'm Shelly Young, owner of The Chopping Block, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a butternut squash soup. I have already roasted the squash. Uh, we do have a video on how to roast the squash. In that video, we're actually roasting acorn squash. Today I used butternut squash. I think it's really great for soup uh, in that it's easy to peel. There's a lot of flesh in it. It's a really meaty uh, squash. As you can see, this is a butternut squash uncooked. But you can use, like here's a carnival squash, here's a delicata, you know, uh, spaghetti squash. Any one of these we could use. It would change the flavor slightly, but they would all be delicious. So feel free to um, change it up. You could even use a pumpkin if you wanted to, same kind of thing. So I already have my squash roasted for this. It's ready to go. That makes the process of making the soup pretty quick. Um, my first step in making this is uh, a little bit of onion. Now this is a giant onion. Uh, this is, in my opinion, for this recipe. So I'm gonna use about half of this onion. We're gonna puree it later, so how I dice this, don't worry about it too much. Uh, doesn't come out too pretty. Don't worry about it. Just a medium dice is fine. I have a cast iron skillet that's heating over medium. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of butter to that and add my onion. I'm gonna to start to like brown it and caramelize it, get some flavor in the onion right away as my first step. So since my squash is roasted, peeling it is a whole lot easier. So if you um, have nightmares about trying to peel a butternut squash, you um, might wanna roast it first for this recipe. Usually this all comes off pretty easily. But if I have a, anything sticking a little bit, I'll just take my knife and cut it off. So today I have a couple of honey crisps. I would normally use a really tart apple for this. Just happens to be honey crisp time. I was in Michigan and so I grabbed these. But I generally like it like a Granny Smith. Uh, something kind of tart, because this squash is pretty sweet. I like to peel it because the skin is tough. But I'm going to take two apples and just dice these. So I've added the apples to the onions. The onions are probably a little browner than you really need them to be, but I really don't care. It just adds even more, as long as they're not burnt, that adds more complexity to the dish. Now when you're making soup, the trick to soup making is building complexity. And I, I don't mean make it hard. I mean add layers of flavor. And we do that by um, adding things at different times and using different cooking techniques, multiple cooking techniques. So we've got this caramelized onion. We add the onion, we're gonna saute, or the uh, apple, we're gonna saute that. That adds a level of flavor to the apple. We have this squash that's been roasted. So that adds another component. So um, I'm gonna saute the apple just for a second. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw that butternut squash that we've already cut up in here. I'm gonna add four cups of chicken stock. I may need a little extra liquid, but uh, I'm gonna start with four cups. If I need extra liquid, I'll just add water. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of cider vinegar, and that's it. I'm gonna let that simmer until the apples and everything are tender. So our apples are tender and uh, the soup's cooked for about 45 minutes or so. It doesn't take too long because the squash is already cooked. I'm gonna puree this now. I've got a Vitamix blender. Uh, you can use it, an immersion, a hand immersion blender for this or a blender. A food processor, you're gonna have an issue where all the liquid's gonna run out of the bottom. So blenders are for pureeing liquids. Food processors are pu for pureeing solids. Um, immersion blenders kind of are somewhere in between. These Vitamixes are pretty cool because they have a locking lid so they hold the, the hot ingredients in. They're not as apt to explode. But when you're putting a hot soup in here to puree, you wanna be very careful because this can definitely explode all over the place. And uh, so I feel it, fill it a third or halfway puree that and do it in batches.
So I've pureed the soup. Now the consistency is a little bit up to you. Uh, one of the things that I did was I want some more uh, liquid in here. My personal preference is on a little thinner side, but some people love their pureed soup really thick, so make it how you like it. But I just rinsed out the extra squash with a little water. Oh, what soup is left? And I'll stir it to get the consistency, <clears throat> or add it and then stir it so I can get the consistency that I want. So what I'm gonna do here in the final stages, after I'm pureeing this, is adjust the thickness. Generally, just with water, not more stock or wine or anything like that, because you're adding a raw ingredient into there, into the soup, and you want uh, it can add kind of a raw taste to the soup. So I, I like to use just water. We haven't salted this at all, so salt to taste. This is going to depend on the stock that you use. Uh, usually, lesser quality stocks have a lot of sodium in them, so. You may use a little bit less, but again, that's up to you. I haven't added any pepper or anything. I'm gonna finish it with black pepper. At this point, that's when we would enrich in the soup. You can leave this out if you want. A lot of, I, I would say, half of the people in our class would say, oh my God, can I leave that butter out? Absolutely you can, but I encourage you to try it without the butter and then add the butter and taste it again. We're talking two tablespoons in this entire batch of soup, which is, less than a teaspoon per serving probably. When you add that, it just adds body, it adds complexity, it just brings the soup alive. So I stir that in. Now I have some heavy cream. You can definitely skip this if you want to. I, generally I don't always have heavy cream in my house so the butter will do the trick. If you want to add a little cream and make it a cream soup, you can but you don't need much like a third of a cup, that's it. Even a few tablespoons is all you need. Any more than that can kind of get overwhelming. So our soup is seasoned just the way I like it anyway. And I'm gonna serve this, this could go individually into your bowls. We had this beautiful soup terrine. I thought this would look great. Uh, croutons sometimes are nice on here. I'm just going to use a little bit of chive today, but other herbs would be delicious. Um, parsley is great. Tarragon would be nice. But, or nothing. You just serve it like this. It's beautiful too. If you want, you can do a little floater of heavy cream on the top just because it looks pretty, not necessarily to add a whole lot more to the soup. I want to show you how to do that just because it's kind of fun. But you just take your cream and you drizzle it around the top. Little chopped chives, tastes delicious. It's an, it's an ingredient that's gonna add some flavor to the soup that I like. And I think it looks really pretty. And that's how you make butternut squash soup.